Hey, how's it going guys? This is Dave2D. The Razer Core is a super exciting product. It seems like a really well executed external graphics solution, something that a lot of people have been looking for years, myself included. Now, they've had some hiccups in production, they've had some delays and stuff, but it's just around the corner, they're gonna release it soon. But there's a couple things I think you guys should be aware of in case you're interested in purchasing one, hence this video. So the first thing is, well, what is the Razer Core? It's essentially a box that you can put a desktop graphics card in. You connect this box up to a laptop using a Thunderbolt 3 cable, and then without even rebooting, your laptop can now use that graphics card. It's pretty cool, right? Now, Razer isn't the first company to do an external GPU. There've been quite a few of them over the years. Most of them haven't been very popular or cost-effective. The one exception is the Alienware graphics amp. That came out last year. It works really well, costs $200, but it uses a proprietary PCIe cable, which means it's not plug and play, and you need an Alienware laptop to make that connection happen. The Thunderbolt 3 connection on the Razer Core is a universal port, and that can push 40 gigabits per second, so it should be amazing, right? Well, there's more to the story. The technology that allows the Razer Core to happen is something called X-Connect by AMD. So AMD developed this. It's essentially driver level support for external GPUs. Now, it, it's almost like a standard for other vendors to follow if they want to support the whole external GPU thing. Now, AMD developed the X-Connect thing. Intel developed Thunderbolt 3 ports. So that's the connection that makes this whole thing happen. But the third part of the puzzle is the software that ties everything together. And that was on Razer. So Razer had the gnarly job of making the Razer Core talk with Razer laptops. So on paper, Thunderbolt 3 can push 40 gigabits per second. A current generation desktop PCIe connection can do 128 gigabits per second. That's a lot more bandwidth than the 40 gigabits per second that Thunderbolt 3 has. Now, there have been tests that show that current graphics cards don't need all of that bandwidth. They can't use it. The Alienware amp is limited to 32 gigabits per second and it performs really efficiently. So if you have 40, like the Thunderbolt 3 pipeline, you seemingly have bandwidth to spare. On the back of the Razer Core, there are ports. There's four USB 3s, an Ethernet jack, and a USB-C that carries data and power to the laptop. So people are gonna use these ports. They might have a mouse connected, a keyboard, a USB headset, an external driver to, an Ethernet connection, and the more stuff you have connected to the core, the more bandwidth you're using up in that pipeline. And once that video card renders the data, it can send it out to an external monitor without using the Thunderbolt connection. But if you don't have a monitor and you wanna send it back to the laptop after rendering, you use up even more bandwidth. Sending it back on the Quad HD screen needs an extra 5.3 gigabits per second. The 4K screen needs almost 12 gigabits per second. So what seemed like a roomy pipeline before can get extremely packed depending on what you have connected to the core. But Razer obviously has some really smart engineers working on this. They're going to deliver an external GPU and it will work. It just might have some limitations because if you choke that Thunderbolt connection too much, the video card performance will suffer. And if you're wondering how the Alien where AMP does it, that cable has two pipelines, one for the PCIe and then a separate one for USB. So there's no competition for bandwidth, but you can't plug and play. You have to reboot it when you plug in the AMP. The Razer Core currently only works with Windows 10. If you have a MacBook and you want this kind of connection for OS 10, you'll have to wait. At launch, it'll support the Razer Blade Stealth, the 2016 Razer Blade, and the Skull Canyon Nuck from Intel. These all meet the external graphics standards set by AMD, so all three of them are gonna work. To get other laptops to support the Razer Core, vendors are gonna to need to do some software development. They need BIOS extensions, they need plug and play support for the core. I think most big vendors like Dell, Lenovo, Asus, MSI, Acer, they'll all eventually support it, they just need some time to do it right. Now in terms of video cards, current and future generation AMD and Nvidia cards will work. There's already drivers from both companies that support it. The Razer Core doesn't come cheap. I was hoping the enclosure would be $250, maybe $300, but it's $500 without a video card. There are currently coupons where if you buy a Razer system, you can save $100 on a Core, but the regular price, 500 bucks. Now, if that's too pricey, one of the alternatives is an Alienware setup. It's not a universal connection and it won't be as thin or as light as a Razer setup, but it's cheaper and it's still an excellent option if you're looking for a laptop that you can crank up gaming performance externally. The other option I feel I should bring up is just to build a mini ITX system. It's obviously a solution that's not for everyone. If you're looking at the Razer Core, chances are you want something to plug up to your laptop, but just to kind of plant the seed in your mind, $500 for the enclosure, 
you could build a really good ITX system for $500 before the video card. It won't be as small as the Razer Core, and I mean, it won't be as portable, but it'll still play games really well. That's basically it. Hope you guys learned a thing or two. Now, as for the technology on the whole, it's really cool. I think it has a lot of promise. It's new, I think it'll mature, and I think when it does, the whole platform will explode, and I think it'll be awesome. Thumbs if you liked this video, subs if you loved it. It's been nice. I'll see you guys next time.